In this class we want to talk about leadership styles. Now this is a rather unusual class because we've really only got two slides, proper slides, but I've broken those slides up into several other parts to show the transitions between them. However what I'd like you to do is to get to the end of the class and go back over it, stop the video, make notes and do some research based on the notes. So for example we'll talk about different leadership styles, pick the individual styles that I mention and go across and see if you can research those styles online, see if you can get more information. But I think it's one of these classes where you will stop the video several times, make your own notes and learn from, from your own researches as well. So let's have a look to see what the, the class is about. Uh, some treat leadership as both a specialised role and a social role. So here's Hugo in 2002. Leadership is a process of influencing others to understand and agree about what needs to be done and how it can be done effectively and the process of facilitating individual and collective efforts to accomplish the shared objectives. Essentially it comes down to leadership is a quality that uh, leads or brings along other people and gets their commitment to achieving a particular task or a particular objective. It's leading people, showing them how it's to be done, showing them that it can be done and giving them guidance on the way, giving them support and guidance. It's a quality that some people seem to possess more than others. But for the moment let's move on yet again and see what it looks like. So leadership styles and their descriptions. Now here's a slide for example you could stop the video and make notes on this one. What I'm going to do over the next few slides, the next eight slides in particular, is to look at each of these in uh, a bit more detail. So we'll start with the egocentric, the self-centered, the dominant, runs the business from the center. So it's a style of leadership where it's self-centered. The, the person runs the business completely without uh, collaboration or without looking for much help from outside, runs the business from the centre and does not seek support. It's very egocentric, based on the individual. Autocratic, well, sends the answers down the, from the top and is non-consultative. Autocratic means the leader makes the decision and tells everybody else what to do, does not negotiate, does not consult the others. It's autocratic, it's, if you like, forced from the top down. Superior egalitarian. This is participative but always giving the impression of knowing the answers. Makes people feel superior and and worthy. But what it is is it's it's the leader consulting and involving others in the decision, but always giving the others the impression that he or she knows best. That there is consultation, but really the answer is known by the person, the 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 leader, him or herself. The, the answer is predetermined almost. It's, it's fixed before the consultation. So it's egalitarian. It wants to involve lots of people. It wants to get their views. But in fact, the impression is that the leader already knows what the outcome is going to be. And that's called superior, superior egalitarian. Conflictual well, uses conflict 
anger and strife to inspire and annoy people towards success. Uh, not a, a nice leader to come in contact with. This leader is quite aggressive um, tries to annoy other people in order to get the result that he or she wants. Um, it's, it's a style of leadership which is not, as I said, not very nice. It is, it is aggressive. It is using conflict, using argument and dispute to try and get the outcome that he or she wants. It does occur, and as I said, it's not a particularly nice form of management. Team builder, well, encourages and develops teams until they achieve results by wanting to please the leader. The team builder is, is more consultative and also more egalitarian. So the team is formed from similar minded people, people who want to participate in the particular task. But the people in the team want to make the, the team leader happy. They want the, the team leader to, uh, to feel that they have made a good contribution. So the leader is the team builder. The team builder is the one who organizes the team to achieve a particular task. Strategic. Well, the strategic leader is always communicating the vision and the path forwards. It's very focused and uncomplicated. It has a clear vision of the way forward and takes an overall view. So the strategic leader is the, the person who is not involved in the nitty-gritty, in the operational side so much, but as someone who inspires by painting the, the big picture, by telling the workers where they will be if the job is done and if it's done correctly. Where they will be and how the company is doing and how it will do in the future if only they will participate and ensure that the operational end is working effectively. The people person a person who appears to be ordinary yet makes others feel extraordinary. This is a, a leader who uh, mixes, with, mixes with everyone in the team or on the task or on the shop floor or wherever, mixes easily with people, makes the people feel very worthy and that their efforts are appreciated and so on. And in, in so doing and heaping this praise on the workers, the workers are more motivated to apply themselves and therefore the leader has got what he or she wanted. So it's, it's a style of leadership which encourages motivation, encourages participation. It involves the workers, it's consultative, they to speak openly and freely and to feel that the leader is one of them whereas in fact he may or may, may or may not be but but in fact the leader is aiming to achieve the task of getting the job done the politician balances and manipulating the stakeholders to keep the power at the center the politician as the leader is is the person who looks at all of the stakeholders, the workers, the shareholders, the suppliers, the local community, whoever's involved in the business, whoever has a stake in the business, looks at all of these and tries to manipulate the all of them, manipulate all the stakeholders so as to keep the power in the business, to keep the power with the managerial team in the business. And that is um, quite a common form of, of leadership, or so it's argued. So what we've got here on, on the slide is um, we've got eight different types of leadership. As I said, stop the video, go back over each of these, make a note of each of them, 
and research each, each of them to see what you can come up with and fill out and pad out your own notes. Okay, so let's um, let's go a little further. The comparison between leadership styles and business situations. Well, here's the, the main slide and all I'm going to do here now is talk my way through this particular slide. So this is another slide. This is the second slide. I said there were really two. We've seen the, the previous one with the eight points, uh, the different styles of leadership. Now this one we've got these points here and this slide you could stop on, make your own notes, fill out what uh, what's meant here, research it, look it up, and uh, we have really completed the class once you've done that. But just to to take you through this particular slide. First of all we have <coughs> charisma and it's best that uh, good at times of change. When, when, when there is change within the organization a charismatic leader is good. Someone who was uh, inspire the workers and lead the workers who will be seen as capable and competent and particularly at times of change when, when, when the organization is changing for whatever reason. Um, charismatic leaders are not good when everything is going well, when everything is going smoothly because the charisma is not required. And perhaps more mundane managerial skills will will be appropriate in times of steady times when, when the business is running smoothly. So it's not good in times of uh, steady steady state activities. And the comments here are that the charismatic leaders may conflict with others in the business. Um, not everybody likes charismatic leaders. Not everybody likes <coughs> people who are constantly enthusiastic and constantly uh, excited about getting something done. Um, sometimes people want to be patient and do it their own way. Superior intelligence. Particularly good in obviously in situations where bright people are required, where the task is complicated and where uh, it may be technical or it may be it may be quantitative it may it may involve many issues um perhaps logistical issues or whatever so bright people are are valued in this situation um they tend to be frustrated in markets that have low value and highly branded volume products bright people tend to like specialist tasks, specialist jobs, um, working on a particular project that's challenging, experimentation and capable of analysis. But in markets that are running smoothly with large volumes and low value, that doesn't suit the right person very well. Uh, obviously, the the bright managers may be resented by those who are not that fortunate. Um, right, so let's go to autocratic. Autocratic is it's good when there is no time for a consultation. Uh, if the business is under pressure perhaps they don't have the luxury of time to sit down and negotiate and look at all the options and an autocratic leader will say this is what has to be done do it now and that's it there's no time wasted hopefully the decision has been a good one and hopefully that the outcome will be good as a consequence but it saves time autocratic leaders don't tend to waste time on long protracted meetings Autocratic leaders can easily have problems with educated and bright managers. Uh, bright managers 
very intelligent managers might look at the autocratic leader and think that some of the decisions were, were bad because perhaps they can see things that the other people can't and so it does lead to conflict within the managerial team but it's good when quick decisions are required um, so to shepherd a shepherd is good in routine situations looking after the flock of sheep metaphorically looking after the situation nothing too onerous nothing nothing fast moving slow paced but good stewardship able to look after the resources quite well not good in times of rapid change or uncertainty uh, this type of leader is not good in those situations but tends to be secure and friendly and have a good routine the shepherd the army general um, is a good organizer and tactics uh, but not very good in routine situations and can become impatient very quickly so someone who has the characteristics of an army general can become quite bored and frustrated a very good planner and a good implementer as you would expect the princely leader prefers to work in traditional and well-established businesses ideally work in long established businesses ones with reputation and history prefers that type of business to say new modern businesses um, tends not to be very innovative and not good in business uh, with mass appeal not, not good if you're dealing with a lot of cu uh, customers tends to be more specialized looks at uh, individual requirements so perhaps making a very expensive product that's sold to a small market small and exclusive market and not innovative uh, bound by tradition they tend to be uh, loyal to the business and try to stay in the same business all their life if they can um, try to stay with the business because they're loyal to it it's it's a tradition nature's native generally good in most situations but especially in well-branded global businesses um, tends to be a good all-round worker they don't like working on pressurized sales oriented businesses but like to have um, good routines well-established business the business could be quite complex they could have several uh, centers uh, even globally several centers but they don't like the immediacy of the pressure of the market they, they like to work further back from the market uh, in planning decision making investment appraisal uh, this sort of area but good overall skills and a good all round business style and they, of, they positively enjoy the work environment they like the business they like being involved so here are some more aspects of style that you could look at and on this slide we've got um, some more ideas about leadership style and again stop the video make your own notes research the notes pad out your notes make sure you've got a good set of notes and uh, that it would be that would give you a good insight into uh, leadership styles that's all I want to do in this class in fact there's as I said only probably two slides that need to be considered in detail 
the ones with all of the information on and your own researches should have that out read the PDFs as well and that's it that concludes this class so thank you for watching